we need to reform the global financial system in a way that it can work for all countries without being biased. At this critical moment, we are setting in stone a lopsided recovery. More than 8 out of 10 recovery dollars are being spent in developed countries. Low-income countries are at a huge disadvantage. They are experiencing their slowest growth in a generation and trying to dig themselves out with woefully insufficient national budgets. The burdens of record inflation, shrinking fiscal space, high interest rates, and they will be higher, and soaring energy and food prices are hitting every corner of the world and blocking recovery, especially in low and some middle income countries. Welcome back to another episode of your Digit Hustle News. As always, I'm Wade Teamer. This week, the World Economic Forum is hosting the annual Davos Conference. This is an event where world leaders come together to discuss the agenda for the year and beyond. Now, the reason I am sharing this with you all is because the players from our Agenda 2022 episode can be seen in full force here. Simply, world leaders use Davos as a forum to strategize the best ways to implement the new order. Many familiar topics have already been discussed. Climate change, the global situation, technology, financial inclusion, everything we've been hearing about all year, right? Now, all of the discussions, they carry with them one underlying theme, globalization. Yeah, I'm going to keep it completely honest with you today, guys. The issues that have been created as a result of the biggest transition in human history, according to world leaders, can only be addressed by global collaboration. Now, it's here where I want to pose a question before we move forward into some of the calls to action that were presented at Davos. On the subject of globalization, here's where I stand. I am both afraid and inspired. I'm afraid because of the fact that I know not everyone is going to be included in this new all-inclusive society. At the same time though, it's exciting to think that for the first time in hundreds of years, we as a race are finally beginning to align our efforts for a goal that is bigger than all of us. Now, no reward comes without sacrifice, of course. So I want to know, how do you feel about this? How do you guys feel about globalization? Is it really what we need as a society to emerge from this generation better than we did the last one? Let us know how you feel down in the comments. While you think on that, we're going to jump forward. At the start of this video, I mentioned how Davos is the place where the future is discussed by the people with the biggest influence on it. The reason why I know we are in a new age is because they produce content like this. The fourth industrial revolution, uh, which came upon us in the last few years, has truly now uh, shown itself in this last two, two and a half years to be the only possible way to take away the poverty of the world, to support all the SDG goals that UN has set up uh, by, by 2030. Uh, there is no other way but for us to serve the society, but in a very strong digital infrastructure that needs to be provided across the entire globe. Uh, Hans is right, billions of people are still not on the internet. And why are they not on the internet? Of course, partly because they don't have the coverage, but many people have the coverage, but not affordability. So in today's session, we're also going to talk about affordability. If a country like India can provide very high quality, large dollops of data per month at $3, uh, there's no reason why we can't carry this through into Africa and marginalized parts of the world where affordability is an issue. The last industrial revolution brought us infrastructure and the focus on commodities to drive innovation. In the fourth industrial revolution, technology is the commodity and the game is to see how much innovation can be drawn from it. All to create a world where we are connected globally on a central system that is said to be governed by data sovereignty. Now, in order for this to happen though, an infrastructure must be put in place and the powers that be 
are definitely making that happen, starting with Verizon. We need to use the 21st century's infrastructure, which is mobility, broadband, and cloud services in order to get it accessible, affordable, and have the right application and scalability. That's why uh, we, uh, together with the World Economic Forum, decided in the beginning of last year uh, to form the Edison Alliance. The Edison Alliance is a group of some 45 uh, multidiscipline people, uh, champions we call them, from private, public, uh, education, from academia. And what we decided for was we wanted to change the life of one billion people by having affordable, accessible digital inclusion, uh, focusing on education, healthcare, and financial inclusion. Uh, firstly, we have had great uh, progress so far with all the people coming together uh, from all the academia, public and private, to find these uh, solutions. But once again, I mean, for me, this is a moment in time where uh, uh, this infrastructure is so crucial. It's not a good to have to be connected. It's actually a human right. So let me put something else on you before we get out of here. At time of recording, the next day's events include discussions on navigating the energy transition, Latin America, and scaling up climate innovation. I have been saying for a very long time that climate change is going to be a very big focus. This is one of the reasons why. Something else that is now officially going to be on the minds of everyone, including the global leaders, it's the metaverse. Yesterday, it was revealed that Microsoft had purchased Activision Blizzard. With this acquisition, guys, because comes a number of advantages. For one, Microsoft is now the biggest gaming entity on earth. And we can officially say that Xbox is better than PlayStation. But more importantly, now that they have Activision, they also have Activision's technology. This includes all titles, IP, GPU rendering, the list goes on, guys. This also ties perfectly into my Disney metaverse theory which implies that we are about to enter the age of mainstream blockchains. What's even more compelling is that the fact that they even covered this story shows me that they knew it was on the horizon and they know it's not going away anytime soon, guys. Now, before we get out of here, guys, going to let you think on that for a little bit. While you do that, we're going to take a quick glance at the charts, guys. At time of recording, Bitcoin is coming in at 42,395. We are only up about one and a half percent, guys. Our Power 42, including our Elite 8, is also looking pretty decent. Right now, the top gainers include Senso, Flow, and Theta Network coming in at two, four, and five percent respectively guys now that's very indicative of the story that we just covered the focus on the metaverse the focus on nfts and the focus on that areas of technology and then of course we see xyo also in the green and of course digibyte too also in the green oops since i just flipped hey that's what happens but even still guys everything's looking good the rest of the list here i the list two check these prices on the daily guys is always down in the description don't ever forget that now looking at bitcoin's chart we are still pretty much playing out the same behavior from monday you can see here that on the rsi on the 14th we wicked up then moved sideways real quiet but what i do see that is of some interest and we'll zoom in here is the RSI behavior. Now, guys, you can see here, we have a bit of a bounce. Last time we had a bounce, pretty good things happen. We don't see these often, so when we do see them, then that is indicating that something very, very nice is around the corner. But on the weekly, the dominating time frame, guys, we still have some work to do. We still have some things that need to play out. And I am still under the belief that we must come down and touch this bottom band that's going to bring us to minimum 35 guys 35k bitcoin before we go absolutely insane for the next four three to four months that's just my target 
according to looking at the charts. Now, of course, anything could happen. The news, some news could come out. Major announcement, send the whole market into a frenzy. You just never know, guys. Still a very young asset class. That means that these markets are a lot more sensitive to things than traditional markets. Now, lastly, before we go, I just want to give you this story here. Golf Energy and Binance announce a partnership for crypto. Now, we're just going to leave this at the headline because the story still needs to be dug into. But I'm going to tell you this. Golf Energy, they have some very, 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 very close relationships with the players that were involved in the subject of today's video okay and if that's the case this means that binance ladies and gentlemen is really about to make their way around this world so been telling you that too binance is taking over the planet we're going to start seeing why this year if you found value in this video don't forget to like subscribe and share this information with friends and family if you're new to crypto I have links to the most notable exchanges in the description using the links below supports the channel and comes with special bonuses for members of our network for more information on the new economy check out the playlist related to this episode on the right and our most recent episode on the left as always have a great day have a prosperous day most importantly we making this money i'll see y'all in the next one